Sorry, guys. Just getting organized here. How is everyone doing tonight? Again, I'm teaming up with Tyler. We're getting plowing through this AWS module for your learning benefit, because I know not everyone has access to this. And so we're going to have this all on YouTube for you to learn along with us. So with that, let me introduce you to the next phase here, which is AWS API Gateway Introduction. It's hard to find a website in 2022 that doesn't make extensive use of application programming interfaces or APIs to provide the various functionalities of the website to end users in their browsers. APIs have become a ubiquitous, ubiquitous and critical part of the modern technology stack. As a quick overview for those unfamiliar, this task will discuss the basics of an API. Before explaining what an API is, it is helpful to define key components of an HTTP or SAPI. API components, the endpoint. This is the URL location of the API example, the address where you can call an API and the resources it can access on your behalf. Method. This specifies the type of requests being made to the API, such as get, post, put, delete, etc. Headers. These are a component of HTTP, but are used by APIs to contain additional information about the request, such as authentication, details, content type, and other metadata. Request body. This is the data sent to the API as part of the request. Get requests won't typically have a request body, but post, put, and delete requests almost always do. Response. This is the data that the API sends in response to the request. It may include a status code, headers, and response body. API purpose. APIs provide a granular mechanism for developers to allow user access to potentially sensitive backend resources. Not only do APIs expose these capabilities for end users, but they also allow third parties to build reliable ecosystems around a product that exposes an API. Notably, this caused recent controversy as Twitter burned third-party client access to the Twitter API. This controversy only reiterates the significance of APIs for organizations using modern technology. Furthermore, as mentioned, modern APIs often expose a number of sensitive backend resources hosted on behalf of the API. These resources are often microservices that proxy the user request as a direct database write or query to the various systems that may be supporting the API functionality. If security errors are made in the development of the API capabilities, they may be exposed to any user who can authenticate to the API or even to unauthenticated users who attempt to use the API. These characteristics make AWS API Gateway a prime target for attackers. So what is the URL, <clears throat> URL location? of an API called, I believe that was endpoint. And what request type commonly doesn't include a get body? Yep, I believe that was get, right? We typically don't request, have a request body. Okay. Accessing the environment. Okay, we, that's just how to set it up. If you have issues, we're good. Gateway Overview, <clears throat> API Gateway Overview, a AWS API Gateway. API Gateway is a service provided by AWS to assist customers in deploying REST, HTTP, and S and WebSocket APIs using serverless infrastructure. While REST and HTTP S APIs are similar, WebSocket APIs are inherently different because the WebSocket protocol allows for bidirectional communication, okay, two-way. This means that WebSocket APIs can push information to clients who have connected without the client sending an additional request. AWS, AWS Lambda and its special integration with API Gateway. API 
gateway essentially provides an API mechanism to attach to other AWS resources. That means when someone on the internet queries an API behind AWS API gateway, they are commonly interacting with other AWS services or resources. These capabilities are known as integrations. Specifically, API gateways will most often integrate with AWS Lambda functions because Lambda is the default AWS service proxy for API gate gateway endpoints. If you have ever worked with Lambda or other serverless functions, they allow you to write scripts and other small programs that can be executed on your behalf by AWS without ever provisioning a server. Integrations introduction. Lambda functions aren't the only service that you may integrate with, but they also serve a second special function in relation to AWS API Gateway, the Lambda Authorizer. The Lambda Authorizer, when configured, determines who can access the endpoints behind an API Gateway and what resources they can request to access. These authorizers are custom code developed by the organizers deploying the gateway in our arbitrarily configurable to make decisions based on any set of characteristics a developer may choose. When misconfigured, the code may allow unintended and unauthorized access to resources behind an API gateway. We'll take a closer look at this idea later on in this room. Answer the questions below. So what does the WebSocket API additionally allow compared to REST or HTTP APIs. So if we go back up here. Oh, I believe it's bi bidirectional communication. Okay. What default function does Lambda perform for API endpoints? Let's see, that's got to be AWS. AWS. Where did I see that? I want to say it was AWS service proxy. If I can spell. Okay, and what is a special secondary function of Lambda? And that's this authorizer. Okay, moving on. Common service integrations with API Gateway. Common services and purposes. API Gateways are a pillar of modern technology platforms. Whether using a managed API Gateway, such as the ones available at all major cloud providers, or a self-managed gateway that you might build yourself, it's impossible to deploy a microservices style architecture without something like an API Gateway. AWS offers first-class support for many of their services to integrate with API Gateway, providing a number of common capabilities that you would need for any API Gateway and for a variety of use cases. Serverless architecture. API Gateway can be integrated with AWS Lambda to build serverless applications where the Lambda function is triggered by API Gateway to process incoming requests and return responses. Microservices. API Gateway can be used to create, deploy, and manage APIs for microservices, allowing for easier communication and integration between services. These microservices could be any server, container, or serverless function, along with a variety of services for messaging, SNS, SQS, Event Bridge, etc. Data storage and retrieval. API Gateway integrates with Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon S3 to provide seamless access to stored data. Real-time communication. API Gateway can be used with WebSockets to provide real-time bidirectional communication between clients and servers. API Management. API Gateway provides tools for monitoring, logging, and managing APIs, making it easier to understand and control API usage. Security. API Gateway provides robust security features, including OAuth 2.0 and AWS Identity and Access Management IAM integration for control, access control and SSL and TLS encryption for data in transit. These are some of the most 
common use cases for integrating services with API Gateway, but there are many more possibilities as API Gateway is a highly flexible and scalable service. What are the two aspects that WebSockets for API Gateway provide? Okay. Uh, where did I see that? So this real-time communication, I think it's this. Real-time bi-directional communication, okay. Using API Gateway for offensive purposes. Offensive API Gateway. API Gateway serves a nifty purpose when hacking. Namely, API Gateway is a serverless reverse proxy. A reverse proxy, proxy is a server that sits. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> A reverse proxy is a server that sits between clients and a web server, forwarding client requests to the web server and returning the server's responses back to the clients. Reverse proxies are commonly used for load balancing, catching or caching, SSL termination, and hiding the identity of the underlying web server. Hackers can use the proxy as a way to hide their identity while launching attacks on the web server or other targets. In fact, when used as a pass-through proxy with a pool of IP addresses, you can effectively make any given request appear to come from an IP address in the pool. Reverse proxies for hackers. Rotating IP addresses when using a proxy can be valuable for security testers for a variety of reasons, bypassing IP restrictions like rate limiting, some web applications and systems may block requests from specific IP addresses if they detect unusual or suspicious activity. By rotating IP addresses, security testers can bypass these restrictions and continue testing. Evading detection. Some systems may have security measures in place that detect and block requests from known IP addresses of security testers. By rotating IP addresses, security testers can evade detection and continue testing. Simulating real-world scenarios. In real-world scenarios, users access websites and applications from different IP addresses. By rotating IP addresses, security testers can simulate real-world scenarios more accurately and identify potential security vulnerabilities that may arise. To rotate IP addresses when using a proxy, one option is to use rotating proxy service. This type of service automatically switches between a pool of proxy servers, ensuring that each request is sent from a different IP address. Another option is to manually switch between different proxy servers, either by manually configuring the proxy settings in the browser or by using a tool that allows for automatic switching between proxy servers. Enter AWS API Gateway and a tool called Firebox, written by Mike Felch of Black Hills Information Security. Mike notes in the README to the project that he wasn't the first person to discover this wonderful feature. Firebox. For this next activity, will you need to log in and use your TriAcme AWS credentials, either by configuring them in the AWS GUI on the attack box or by using AWS Cloud Shell. Fireprox is a tool designed to use AWS API Gateway for rotating your IP address when making web requests. It implements an API Gateway endpoint that redirects all requests to a configured domain or IP address. This capability has proven particularly useful for password spraying and similar credential attacks. It is also useful for making requests to HTTPS or WebSocket endpoints that may implement IP-based restrictions or rate limiting. This proves particularly useful when querying APIs that implement IP-based rate limiting. It turns out that our good friends at Best Cloud Company have their own API endpoint. We can use Firebox to make requests to the Best Cloud Company by deploying a Firebox endpoint using AWS Cloud Shell, clone and install the repository using the following commands. Okay, so we're just Git cloning. I did this already to the machine. We'll CD into that directory, CD Firefox, 
Okay, and then if you, I've already done the pip3 install, but for first time, you would run the requirements text and just to test that it's working we have this help menu so we look like we're good to go so fireprox is oh i see this explains if you do use the attack box everything's already installed for you so if you prefer that i'm demonstrating it on my home machine when you're in the appropriate directory you can run this which we just did for those using cloud shell you'll need to clone the repository it's already installed on the attack box when you are in the appropriate directory you can run fireprox using the following command which we did this command will simply output the help information okay next you can go to your browser or use burp suite or another proxy or curl and use this lovely guy. Okay. Actually, I think we want to, I want we want to do this. I want to create the endpoint. Ah, Python 3, man, create URL. Okay, so now we have our own endpoint to work with. So the next part of this you'll then use the return API ID to delete the endpoint. Okay. So what's the serverless capability that AWS API Gateway represents? It is serverless. It's a reverse proxy. What does rotating IP address allow you to bypass? So that was up here we're bypassing ip restrictions right which would include i always just think of it as rate limiters but i obviously there's other variances of of that okay and we have attacking lambda authorizers on api gateways all right now we get to hack it right so Lambda Authorizers Introduction. Lambda Authorizers and API Gateways are functions that provide authorization for API requests. They are used to control access to specific resources fronted by API Gateway, ensuring that only authorized users are able to access these resources. A Lambda Authorizer function is executed before an API request is processed. And in return, a policy document that specifies whether the request is authorized or not. Lambda authorizers are useful because they allow you to perform complex authorization logic without having to manage infrastructure or write custom authorization code. This makes it easier to manage access control for your APIs, and it also enables you to offload resource-intensive authorization tasks to Lambda. Greedy expansion. While using wildcards and API paths with Lambda authorizers in API Gateway can be convenient, it's important to be mindful of the potential consequences of greedy expansion. And this asterisk wildcard, like this is a recurring theme because it seems like wherever this happens, there's security issues. So the wildcard and rejects is a greedy operator that matches zero or more characters in a string. So when used in matching URL paths, this can lead to unexpected matches if not used carefully. For example, a rejects pattern with a greedy asterisk might match more characters than intended, potentially match matching parts of multiple URL paths. To avoid this, it's important to use grouping and lazy operators to control the match and ensure it only matches the intended portion of the URL path. 
For example, if an ABI path flow wildcard is created to allow access to a specific resource, but an unintended path that includes the approved path name is also created, it may lead to unexpected authorization for that resource. This could result in security vulnerabilities as users may be able to access restricted resources without proper authorization. For a closer examination of the security weakness in relation to AWS API Gateway, please see The Fault in Our Stars by Tenshi Security. Abusing greedy expansion of Lambda authorizer policies. Okay, it sounds like we're going to get some hands on here. It's important to carefully consider the implications of using wildcards in API paths and to implement proper testing and validation to ensure that unintended consequences do not occur. Unfortunately, our friends at Best Cloud Company drop the ball. Can you find a way in? We start by looking for web properties associated with Best Cloud Company. We stumble upon their API. It wasn't really hard. I mean, API bestcloudcompany.org seems pretty obvious in hindsight. Once we identify an API, we could typically use a tool such as FLUF or Kite Runner to form the discovery of API endpoints through fuzzing. These techniques and tools can help identify potentially interesting endpoints and opportunities to expose data or gain additional access. These tools are really outside the scope of our hacking because the best cloud company really isn't good at security. You can start by checking out their API's documentation in a web browser at this location here. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, here's the documentation from Best Cloud. Welcome to our company. We have been helping organizations solve their cloud security problems for hundreds of years. We built this, I don't think APIs have been out for hundreds of years. We built this API as a password manager for our team, too many clients to handle credentials for. You can get comfortable with our API by making get requests, get requests to the test stage with test and admin. Test would be a test user and admin. Well, you know, right? Almost forgot. You need to add a header. Okay. So this is a header. Uh, authorization token testing one, two, three. Reach out to John once you're familiar with how to make requests and he'll get you the prod stage password. Okay. Sounds like another endpoint here. Okay, so API requests commonly require some sort of request header to validate the requesting party. In our case, Best Cloud Company indicates a need to use an authorization token header, which we just saw, and gives us suggestions on a couple endpoints to try. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so if we just curl this particular endpoint or get this cloud org. Okay. Move permanently. We're going to use curl, a command line HTTP utility to perform requests. You may want to use a tool like Postman or Burp to form our, your own testing of API endpoints. Those tools can be particularly useful when making complex put post requests. Using the curl request above, you should see the same information in an HTML format when you run the command. Next, let's try requesting one of the endpoints that the documentation author suggests we will make our request to the test stage and the test endpoint. Okay, so now we're just adding that test, oh, test, test. Come on, I can type. And we're getting We 
getting re redirected, which is unexpected. And I see that the command, oh, we're not using the S. We're not using secure. Okay. There we go. Yes, there is a difference, right? So unauthorized, probably because we're missing that authorization token. So that's where the header comes in. So now let's just add the header. Okay. We well, can just tack that header on here. We, we do have to quote it. So it parses correctly. Okay. And now we have an API key, testing one, two, three. Okay, so what if we try an admin at point? So I guess that would be, I guess we call it test admin. Okay, so now we get the API key for test admin. Okay. So it's left as an exercise to you to find the authorization token you might use to access the prod stage. Okay, so this is another endpoint, prod stage admin endpoint. But you can't, but can't you request this guy, prod test now, with your token? Well, I don't know, can we? So let's try it. What is the endpoint here? Prod test. Okay, and we get another API key. So to me, this means the API key works on this production endpoint. So I mean what I would what I would plug in immediately then with this logic is if I wanted the admin endpoint on this prod then I would plug that API here. Ah, and look at that. Now we have the admin's API key for prod. So we're so we're in. That's the, I guess that's the hack, right? So if we look at if we look at the content here, so why is it possible? I mean, John needed to give you the password, right? Well, it turns out that the best cloud company fell victim to exactly the attack Tenchi Security raised regarding greedy expansion. Here's an example of what their Lambda authorizer policy looks like. So if you read through this, you know, it's basically just two, two condition statements, right? We got an if and an else if, elif. And so it's all it's doing is it's checking the key value pair authorization token and it does it equal testing one two three like we saw and if it does then it spits out the, the response the data that we're expecting it's also there's so there's two conditions that it's checking so also and here's the other condition it's checking that production authorization key and if it does then it checks that endpoint there and gives us that data. Now, see, and you can see this crazy use of wildcards. I mean, they're really making the demonstration here. I mean, everything's wildcarded almost, right? So you can see why we're getting the matches. And that's the vulnerability is using wildcarding without, uh, I mean, just without any thought behind it. So, in fact, to demonstrate what is happening here, try to request the prod test endpoint. It should be the same, which we did. Well, look at that. It turns out that having test as a value means the resource isn't accessible using your API key, but having just the test in the endpoint path does. I mean, while I don't want to give Best Cloud Company too much credit, I would have reasonably made the same mistake, and many people do. So. 
this is definitely something that's happening even today, right? So like if you were out there bug bounty, this would be something to search on, right? If you could make a script and there's probably tooling out there that would help you automate that. But definitely something to be aware of uh, and to be able to explain effectively if you are giving a pen test and you need to, uh, you know, kindly explain with empathy to developing te developer teams what's going on here. So this is a this is a great lab for that. Uh, OK, so what is the API key for the test user? I think that was testing one, two, three, right? And the API key value for test admin, I think we found that here. And the final prod admin, which we were able to get right here. Yay. Okay, that was it. Short and sweet. So I hope you guys learned something. I personally thought that was an excellent well put together lab with a nice hands on demonstration of the vulnerability. So until next time, hope you learned something and happy hacking. <laughs>